I'd like to welcome Michelle Robodeau, who's a member of the War Resisters Support Campaign. Good afternoon, sisters and brothers. I, I think people in this city who have been out on the streets marching against war over the past few years are familiar with uh, the war resisters who have come up to Canada. I want to introduce some of them to you today. Jeremy Hintzman, Na Nguyen, and Liam, their son, who were the first to come up here, first U.S. soldier refusing to fight in Iraq to seek refuge in Canada. And since Jeremy arrived in January of 2004, we have seen an influx of people from every branch of the U.S. military, from the Marines, the Navy, the U.S. Army, National Guardsmen. And I want to introduce other resistors you may not have met yet. Phil McDowell and Jamina Ponte. They arrived here in October and are making their life here in Toronto. And Steve Josek, who arrived in December from Florida. We have also some Vietnam resistors up here. Uh, Tom Riley and Lee Zaslavsky, who is the coordinator of the War Resister Support Campaign, who have been the backbone, the Vietnam resistors, the people who came up 35 years ago opposing another illegal and immoral war. We are at a crucial point in the political battle to win asylum for war resistors because this isn't just a legal battle. We learned a lesson when we marched in our tens of thousands before the beginning of the invasion and occupation of Iraq we actually achieved something that many of us thought might not be possible. The Canadian government made a decision in the teeth of the opposition on the streets to not send Canadian troops to Iraq. And now we need to use that political pressure to make sure that we follow through and be consistent with that position, which is to provide asylum for those who very courageously are refusing to participate in that war and therefore for the federal election coming up. We need to make this a political issue for every candidate, every politician who says they stand for peace, then prove it and stand up for war resistors and say you'll support a provision for asylum for them. Thank you very much. War resistors, welcome here. War resistors, welcome here. War resistors, welcome here. War resistors, welcome here. My name is Phil McDowell. I'm originally from Warwick, Rhode Island. I uh, joined the United States Army in November of 2001. It was directly after the September 11th attacks on the World Trade Center in the Pentagon. I, uh, it was during my senior year in college when that happened, and I was looking forward to my future, what am I going to do with myself, and then September 11th happened. Uh, I, I saw that as a calling for my generation to something that we had to stand up for that was going to define us in the future. And I did that by joining the Army. So I finished out the year and uh, went to training uh, the summer of that year. And again, you know, when I joined, there was no talk about an invasion in Iraq. Uh, we weren't even on the ground yet in Afghanistan. So during my training, it was when they started talking about this build up to the war and the weapons of mass destruction, the ties between Saddam Hussein and Al Qaeda and 9 11, the search for finding uh, intelligence of the uh, uranium in, from Africa. All this stuff, I believed it. Uh, like most Americans growing up, we believe that our country is something of a, of a moral stand, that, this is, that uh, we're something that we can, we can be looked up to in the world, that what we do is right and just. So I believe what my government was telling me, that these things were there, that these were happening, that there was a threat, an immediate threat from Saddam Hussein. Uh, so in March, very beginning of March 2004, uh, I deployed to Iraq, and after a few months, things started coming out that we're not finding these weapons of mass destruction. It's, it's been over a year now, so well, since the, I'm talking about by the time I deployed there. It had been a year since the invasion. No weapons found. The government comes out and admits there's no link between Saddam Hussein and Al-Qaeda. They've totally dropped the whole subject of the uranium uh, coming from Africa. So I started asking people in my spheres, what's the justification for this war? Why are we here? What does this have to do? What are we doing here now? If everything that we were told for the basis of this invasion is false and is proven to be false. Um, so what they told me was we're here to help the Iraqi people. And you know, at the same time, the same people that are telling me this 
are the same people that are telling me when we go out in convoys around the city to run the civilian cars off the road if they get in your way. So how can you be telling me that we're helping people and at the same time tell me to run their car off the road? So I was in Iraq for a year and I came back to the States in March 2005. Uh, I separated from the military and my official separation date was July 23rd. So while I was on terminal leave, I was out, I was out hiking and uh, I called home, uh, I took, called my wife to say hello, see, see how things are going. And she let me know that she had gotten a call from a friend of mine saying that I was going to be stop lost, that they had issued a stop loss order for my unit. I went back and I put it straight forward and they knew how I felt about the war. I said, I, I don't support the war, I don't support your mission, I don't wanna go. Uh, they said, you have to go and you don't have a choice. So I, I had already promised myself, uh, my family, my wife that whatever happened, uh, I was not going to go back to Iraq. It was just something that was not going to happen, what, however it turned out. And so I started looking at my options, uh, talking to military lawyers and my congressmen uh, again and again and again, and nobody could help me. I had decided that uh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to leave the Army, leave the United States, and come to Canada. I could have stayed in the military uh, and said, no, I'm not going to go, uh, but they would have just put me in jail, and I don't think that I should have to go to jail for following international law. <laughs> so in October of last year, I came here uh, with the help of the campaign, and um, I, I got housing with the campaign. They found someone to, uh, for me to live with, who I, I'm also working with now because he installs solar systems. As Carolyn said, I was nine and a half years in the U.S. Army. Um, that's uh, half of a military career. Um, you get vested after, uh, after 10 years, the Army guides your career, which means that you can no longer opt to get out. You can't say, I quit, I don't want to do this anymore. Uh, my unit was facing uh, deployment to Iraq. Uh, they told me when I was going, where I was going, and I had about a year to prepare. When I came to Canada uh, on August 21st, 2005, I had no idea what I was going to do and what I was getting myself into. Uh, I, I sat down with uh, Lee and Michelle and a couple of the other resistors who are not with us today. Uh, they're uh, living out on the West Coast now. Uh, Ryan and uh, Jenna Johnson and Cliff. Uh, and after talking with them, uh, I knew that this was the right thing to do. My heart just wasn't in it anymore, being a, a, a non-commissioned officer and in, uh, in, in, in taking young American men and women into battle in Iraq. Uh, and as, as anyone knows, if your heart isn't into it and, and doing your job, you're not going to do it to the best of your ability, whether it be taking photographs or uh, working in a steel mill. You know, if you're, if you're going to do something, I was always brought up, do it to the best of your ability. And if I can't do my job to the best of my ability, and I'm in Iraq, someone dies. A young American man, woman, someone else's mother or son dies. And I don't want that blood on my hands. Not when it's about oil, and not when it's about lies. Um, people say, you know, uh, you took an oath, and uh, part of my oath is to defend the Constitution of the United States against enemies foreign and domestic. My enemy is not foreign, my enemy is domestic. It is George Bush, it is kind of these rights. It is Dick Cheney, Hal Burton, and all those companies in the states that are profiting from the blood of American soldiers.